Hello, Sebastian here, and today we're going to talk about file formats and how to distribute your content once you've actually produced your video. So there are two main types of file formats nowadays. We got MOV and we have MP4. And the big difference between the two is that MOV, it's a lot larger. And that's because it preserves substantially more data than an MP4 might. And that makes it useful for some things and much less useful for others. There's definitely benefits to each format. Right at a camera, you're, unless you have a more advanced camera like a um, DSLR or mirrorless camera or a more video focused camera, generally you're not going to be able to specify the format that your video is in once it comes out of the camera. And that's okay. Uh, generally you don't need to. It's gonna probably try and provide you as high quality of format as possible. And so that's generally why out of camera, like I believe the iPhone does this as well, you'll be getting an MOV file. And for editing, that can be super useful, especially if you are using a nicer camera and you want to do something like color grading, where you can take out the exact look you want in the color, and then you can export to a smaller file size that doesn't have all that extra data that you weren't using when you decided on your final color look. So then that brings us to our pretty important distinction of MOV is an important video format because it allows for that control in editing, which is why it's great for editing. But for video distribution, MP4 is much, much better. And that's because it provides you with a much smaller file size than an MOV file ever could. So that's why it's super important when you're sending off your files that you do so in an MP4 format because chances are when you give it to ASB, we're not gonna do anything with the color, with the video once you give it to us. We're just going to put it into our assembly or our film festival and we're going to distribute it. And that's why we want that smallest possible file size. Um, but that, then again, that MOV, when it comes right out of the camera, it can be very useful for editing. So generally, you want to have that MOV out of camera, put it in the editing software, and when you export, export to an MP4. Um, so once you're in, uh, if you're on the computer, on Windows, and on a Mac, you can see right in the File Explorer, whether that's Finder or File Explorer, you can see the file format, and then the other big important piece of data is how large the file size is. And generally those things are right next to each other. Um, the reason why you want to know the file size as well as the format is that that will give you an idea about how easy that file is going to be to transport. Generally, email, we, email is not a very good way to distribute video, but there are lots of great ways. And generally they involve cloud storage and link sharing. And so I have found one of the best ways to share video, especially the large files, is actually to use your school OneDrive huh? because your school OneDrive has a very large data limit huh? and SPS actually pays for it. So it's a very useful, secure, easy way to share video. So, um, so when you're sharing a video with our school OneDrive, what you're gonna do is you're either going to go to onedrive.seattleschools.org or if you have it already linked to your file system or your school computer, you can even just drag and drop it into that OneDrive folder. It's generally pretty nice just to create a dedicated folder for your video, especially if you're editing. That way you can keep all your videos in that folder on your OneDrive, as well as the project file for your editing. And then um, if you ever need to like switch machines or something like that, if, if it's all connected to your OneDrive, that path will be the same. Uh, and so once you expect, export the final video, you will make sure that it is in your OneDrive, wait for it to upload, and then what you can do is you have to go to OneDrive at seattle.seattleschools.org to do this. Unfortunately, the sharing mechanism on the actual computer is not nearly as robust as it is online. But once you're online, you can either share with people specifically, or you can share with just a general link that anybody can open up and download. For submitting to ASB, generally unless you're given a specific name, please use the share with anybody because what that will allow us to do is if you send that to our ASB email, anybody that checks that email that is facilitating the event, whether it's an assembly or our film festival, something like that, 
that person can click it uh. and they don't even have to sign in. It just takes them to your file and it's hosted on your OneDrive. Uh, so it's all within your account and then they can just hit download uh, and that will preserve the entire integrity of the file instead of having it be compressed or something in order to allow it to go into an email. Uh. Uh, another great way is if you are a Mac user, if you have an iPhone, mail drop is super useful. Um, this sometimes it can compress, so it's not quite as robust as OneDrive, but if you don't have the OneDrive app on your phone or if it's harder for you to upload, mail drop is a great solution. Uh, what this does is it's on your iPhone, it'll upload to your iCloud, and then it will send the person an iCloud link to download it, similar to how your OneDrive, you're sending a OneDrive link. And then that person can click the link, it'll take them to your iCloud, and then they can download it. Another super useful way to transfer your videos because you're not sending it over that email protocol, it's being uploaded to the cloud and it's hosted there. And that person's just pulling it from a website as opposed to from that email where the protocol is not necessarily as efficient for sending. Then there are also other services. I know people who use Mediafire. I personally think it's a little sketchy with all the ads, but generally OneDrive and MailDrop, great solutions. Google Drive also works great. Uh, um, the thing is, is that with Google Drive, you have to make sure you're not sharing with specific people. Again, you have to do that. Anyone with the link can view or edit because if multiple people have to handle the file, you wanna make sure that you're sharing with, so that there's maximum accessibility so the person on the back end can access. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, I hope this was helpful and uh, good luck sharing your videos. We're excited to see them. Thank you.